The question for discussion this week is, how do we know if they've learnt anything? This is a fundamental question. The point of standing in front of a group of students for a lesson is to teach them something they didn't know at the beginning of the lesson, to get them from point A to point B. Traditionally, assessing this was straightforward. You tested them at the end and gave them a mark, a so-called summative grade. We still do this for the end of unit tests, GCSE, A-level, degrees, and of course your PGCE. At the end of this course, you will all get a pass, I hope. But over the last decade or so, there has been a fundamental change in assessment in schools to what is known as formative assessment. Ongoing assessment that informs teaching and learning during the teaching process and should lead to improved summative outcomes. What this means in practice is that teachers have to plan assessment strategies into their lessons and not just tag them on at the end. So-called assessment for learning rather than assessment of learning. The key drivers for this change have obviously been both the desire to improve standards and the need to be accountable. All teachers want to be more effective in the classroom, but this has been very much driven by the accountability dimension. After all, taxpayers spend an enormous amount of money on education and they rightly demand value for that money. The result of this is the requirement to be able to measure student progress. Individual students now have more assessment data on them than ever before. I suggest you find out what assessment data there is on students in your school. Does your school use Yellis or the Fisher Family Trust? If you don't know what these are, find out. One of the main ways of assessing students has been through the national curriculum levels, which have been embedded in schools for over 20 years. However, the new national curriculum has abandoned these levels, so you might like to ask your mentor what they intend to do instead. I suspect most schools will carry on using them, at least in the short term. It's true to say that the use by schools of formative assessment strategies has transformed teaching practices. You might like to list all the assessment strategies that you've seen being used in your partnership schools and divide them into formative and summative, stra summative strategies. As part of this move towards formative assessment, there has been a shift from what is called norm-referenced assessment to criterion-referenced assessment. You need to find out what these terms mean and think about how this change has impacted on assessment in schools. You have probably realised that there is a national political dimension to the assessment debate. I've already mentioned the need to be accountable. Everyone wants schools to improve. The good old Daily Mail has been saying for years that standards in schools are declining. A campaign for real education seemed to want to go back to the good old days, whatever they were. I have included a table of GCSE results from 1988. It clearly shows that the numbers getting A and A star grades has gone up. On the face of it, which we should as teachers be able to celebrate this as a success, but there are issues with it. Taking into account the changes in the way students are assessed, can you account for this increase? The current government is making some real changes to the national curriculum which will affect you next year. They are reforming GCSE and A-levels, so that what they have what Michael Gove called rigour. The changes to the English and Maths GCSE were announced last week. If you're a Maths or English student, be prepared to answer questions about these changes. So to return to the key question, how do we know if they have learnt anything? By the end of this unit, you will be able to answer it.